In this video, I'm going to briefly introduce the idea of an object, and you'll learn how to specify objects in Python in the next video. So we are looking at an Excel spreadsheet that I've created as an example, and in it we're thinking about products in a grocery store. Now I've created below a table for three products that has characteristics that essentially any product in a grocery store would have. So essentially every product in a grocery store will have the following characteristics. It will have an SKU, which is the shopkeeping unit, which is the way businesses keep track of the products. Associated with every SKU will be the name of the product. Products will also have brands, manufacturers, they'll have width, depth, and height. And in, in thinking about these variables, what I'm really thinking about is the information that a business would need in order to store a product, either on the shelves where the consumers buy the products in a grocery store or perhaps in a warehouse. Now, anytime you're storing a product, you care about how big it is, its shape and its volume, and also how much it weighs. So every product in the grocery store is going to have a width, a depth, and a height. These could be specified in different units. So I've captured in this column that says DIM units for dimension units what the units are. Every product is going to have a weight. And again, the weight can be specified in different units. And so there's a weight unit. But basically, every single product in the grocery store will have measures corresponding to each of these columns. Now, a traditional way to look at this kind of data is sort of column by column. And if we do that, if we look at the column of SKUs, what that is is it's a vector of character strings. Same with the name, the brand, the manufacturer, and so on. The width, the depth, and the height, each of these columns is a vector of real numbers. The units now are going to be a vector of character strings and so on. So we can look at this data as a collection of columns where each column represents a vector and a vector has the same type of data in it. This is the kind of approach that one takes if, when one is doing uh, linear regression, for example, because you think of each of the columns in your X matrix as a variable and you're doing things like trying to predict a Y variable from those X variables. So for example, in this case, we might try to predict weight from the width, depth, and the height. But there's another way to look at this data and it's basically based on looking at the rows. If you look at the rows, you have one row per product. And what you might want to do, and it, it's very useful to do, is to keep together all of the data that is associated with one product. So for example, if my product is the house brand of cornflakes, then I want to keep together both the SKU, the name of the product, its brand, its manufacturer, its dimensions, okay, and its weight. And I can think about doing that for each different kind of product. Instead of looking at things from a column-oriented point of view, I look at things from a row-oriented point of view. And, and looking at things that way, what I want to do is for every product, collect together into one object uh, all of these variables that are of different types. So that motivates really the idea of an object. What you're trying to do is keep all the measures associated with one thing together. But there's another reason you're interested in objects as well. In my example so far, I've only been looking at variables which exist for essentially every product in the store. But if you look at things in a little bit more detail, then there are many variables for products that don't exist for every product in the store. For example, some of these products are liquid and liquids are typically measured in a different way than by weight. So I have a liquid volume and for example for the milk that's typically measured in gallons. For the laundry detergent that would be typically measured in something like fluid ounces. If I look at the two food products, 
Well, food products have a whole lot of things associated with them that are unique to food products, and that's the nutritional information. So the nutritional information includes the number of servings in the package. It would include the serving size. It would include the calories. It would include the grams of fat, the calories from fat, and so on. And there's a whole bunch of other things that are required to be reported on nutrition labels. But all of this data on the nutrition labels doesn't apply at all to the laundry detergent. So the idea here is that there's different variables for different types of products. Now I could, I suppose, define one huge table that would include all of the possible things that you might have to measure on any of the products. So for any product, most of those variables would not even apply to it, so they'd be left blank or marked as missing or something. But that's a very confusing and inefficient way to think about this data. Rather, it's much more useful to think about each product as an object that has a collection of characteristics, and these characteristics can be different for each of the objects. For example, food products then have all of their nutrition information, but non-food products like the laundry detergent don't, although they may have other kinds of information unique to laundry detergents. For example, uh, in laundry detergents, it's very important whether the detergent is, is high efficiency or not. High efficiency laundry detergents can be used in front loading machines, whereas regular laundry detergents really should not be. So this is the idea of objects. Objects takes essentially a row oriented version of the data. It's going to bind together data items of different types and for each of these objects you're going to be able to bind together only the variables that apply to that object. Now before leaving this basic introduction to objects, I want to talk about three characteristics of how they are implemented in programming languages and I think I'm going to call these features of objects. And these three features are inheritance, methods, and encapsulation. So I'm going to begin talking about inheritance. If you look at the way I've laid out this example, you'll notice that there's kind of a hierarchy. And at the top level of this hierarchy, there is the data that has to do with any product in the store. Now at the next level of the hierarchy is the type of product and the various data that is associated with that particular type of product. So I'm just going to go ahead and use an example here going down one branch of this hierarchy and it might be a food product. So for all food products we are going to have nutrition information and the nutrition information follows a standard format as a result of regulation. Now within the idea of a food product we could have many different classes of food products. For example we could have dairy. Dairy products are going to be different from other types of food products and have special data and information that is needed for them because for example they need to be refrigerated or frozen they are going to have expiration dates and so on. So within all of the products in the store there's this hierarchy that starts with any kind of product and the information needed for any kind of product and then the major classes of products such as food products or dry goods or cleaning or whatever. And within each of those major classes of products there are then going to be these subclasses of products and at each level in this hierarchy, more information is going to be attached to that product. Incidentally, the variables and information that are attached to a particular product are typically called the attributes. So when you refer to the attribute of an object, it is going to be a variable type within the object. 
Now it would be very nice, and in fact you can do this with uh, objects in computer languages, to be able to create a type of dairy product and have it automatically inherit the attributes and other characteristics of every class that it is a part of. So for example, the dairy products would inherit all of the variables defined for the food products, and the food products in turn would inherit the variables that are defined for products in general. So this is the idea of inheritance in objects. It's the idea that there is this hierarchy or tree of information and that objects that are more specific are going to inherit the characteristics of the classes that are broader. So that takes care of inheritance. Now in presenting this basic idea of objects, I've talked about keeping the data required for a particular item together. But in addition to the data or attributes for the items, I can also keep together with the item special functions that operate on that item and the data in that item. So for example, for any product I'm going to have a width, depth, and a height. And I might want to be able to compute the volume that the product will take on the shelf by multiplying the width times the depth times the height to compute the volume. Or I might want to be able to convert between various units and so on. But there are a group of functions that I might want to apply to the data at the product level that will compute things that I care about. Any kind of function that is associated with an object is called a method. And as you might imagine with this hierarchy of objects, there can also be a hierarchy of associated functions. So for example, for a dairy product, one of the attributes that you might have is the expiration date. And you might want to compute the amount of time left to expiration by subtracting today's date from that expiration date. Now that is a method that might be very useful for dairy products, but would not be a method associated with, for example, laundry detergent. Laundry detergent might have other kinds of special methods that are associated with it. So the key point here is that in addition to associating just data with these items and objects, we can also associate functions and these are called object methods. And there can also be a hierarchy of these available methods that depend on the hierarchy of objects. Now the very last thing I want to talk about briefly is this notion of encapsulation. The idea of encapsulation is that an object can keep its data private and that data can only be manipulated then by the methods that allow the data to be accessed or changed and so on. Encapsulation is an important idea because many bugs in computer programs occur because of side effects of data being changed when the programmer hasn't realized they changed it or hasn't anticipated the side effect of something that they're doing. And this whole notion of objects can be used to make data private and therefore only be changed through very specific methods that allow it to only be changed in certain ways and prevent side effects from occurring, certainly at least as easily. Now these three ideas of inheritance methods and encapsulation can be implemented in this object-oriented, item-oriented view of the data, where you keep all the data associated with a product together, you recognize that there are different types of products and that they therefore have different needs with respect to the data or in the language of objects attributes that are associated with them. This object-oriented view also recognizes that specific items have needs of certain specific functions called methods and these functions or methods can be associated with the objects and that all of these things fall naturally into classes of different types of food products in our example and that these classes also 
fall very naturally into a hierarchy where it is very useful and convenient for an object that is defined with specificity like a dairy product to inherit both the methods and the attributes from the classes of objects that it lies in. Finally, it is also often useful to keep the data associated with a product private and only allow it to be manipulated through methods that are assigned to the object. This tends to prevent side effects, which is a source of many very difficult to solve programming bugs. Now, in subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how the idea of objects is implemented in Python. As you might imagine, this will take several videos to do, but we'll begin in the next video.